So what are human factors? This short video for Frontline Star will provide you with an overview of human factors and why they are relevant to us in healthcare. Have a think. Have you ever done something wrong because of bad design? For example, have you ever walked into a door thinking it was a push door when it turned out to be a pull door? What about this design? What are the odds of picking the wrong medication rather than the right medication based on the design of those ampules? These are just a few examples of the huge science that is human factors and ergonomics. And this video seeks to define the terms human factors and ergonomics, describe their role in healthcare, and hopefully by the end, you'll appreciate their influence on your performance as an individual, as a team, and at the system level. Human factors is a science that provides an understanding of what affects our performance and behavior in the workplace. It allows us to better understand how we work, both mentally and physically, and how we can design our work environment and systems to maximize patient care, safety, and staff well-being. Human beings are fantastic. Our brains are incredible at being able to make sense of complex situations and multitasking. We're constantly jumping from one task to an idea to an action to another. And you can understand why you feel so tired at the end of the shift when your mind is working like that, trying to juggle multiple tasks. But of course, that also means that sometimes we miss something or we drop something. And what about when you're ill as well? We understand that our cognitive functions can be impaired. And when we are patients, we may need extra support for everyday decisions and tasks that we wouldn't normally need in day to day life. And what about the world around us? How does that influence us? Understanding our strengths and weaknesses as humans and how we receive and process information allows us to better design equipment, tools, software and physical environments for us and our patients. For example, when we read, our brain makes associations between the order of the letters in a word that we are familiar with and allows us to read it quicker because we don't read every single letter. You can read this on the screen easily. But what about these? How about now? Medication labels is a great example of human factors redesign that helps us address the risk of how humans process information with those tactfully placed capital letters. Human factors is user-centered. It is about understanding how we are affected by the tools, tasks and environment we work in and the culture of our teams and organization and then takes that understanding to make the situation better. It allows us to understand how complex healthcare is and how one part of healthcare, by changing it, can easily impact one another. We're going to look at three main components of human factors, us as individuals, teams, and then the wider system. So let's start with you. As a human being, we have limitations. The problem is that when we reach our limits, if we overcome our limits, we're far more likely to commit an error or not identify when an error has occurred. A great way to think about this is to think that you have got three metaphorical buckets and the fuller those buckets with stuff, the more likely you are to commit an error. One of your buckets is your self bucket. This bucket fills up depending on your expertise, how much skill you've got, how much knowledge you've got and how much capacity you've got. Your second bucket is the context bucket. This fills up depending on the situation that you're working in how much support you've got, what equipment you're using, and how is the environment around you designed. And then you have your task bucket. This relates to the particular task you're doing. Healthcare is very task focused and fills up depending on the type of task you're doing, how complex it is, how likely an error is to occur, how many steps it takes, and how new is it to you. You can think about this before you go into any situation. How full are your self context and task buckets? The fuller they are, the more likely you are to do something wrong or not spot a problem. This is the point where you should ask for help to minimise the chance of things going wrong. Make sure you recognise your limitations. And then what about teams? What makes an excellent and effective team? A good team has clear leadership, is aware of the situation that's going on, looks after its team members and communicates clearly. Leadership means making sure the team is working towards a common goal making sure that team processes are used, for example, briefings, huddles and debriefings. A good leader also makes sure the team is on the same page by monitoring the situation, ensuring everybody is aware of everything that is going on. A good team looks after each other. That means identifying when your colleagues need help, but also accepting help you need it. It also means speaking up. 
should you see anything that concerns you related to safety or quality. And all of this requires communication. Communication is about saying what you mean and making sure what you mean is heard and is actually undertaken. This is called closed loop communication. And then finally we have the system. This is the wider world around you that is constantly changing and you as a person have to constantly adapt to changes in the system. This is called resilience. We as individuals have resilience, we adapt to the world around us, but also the system that we work in adapts to the constant everyday changes. Look around you in your workplace. Who is there? What equipment are you having to work with? What protocols and policies are you following? What is the environment like? By identifying all of these different interactions allows us to identify where there are factors that might inhibit our performance, but also factors that might support our performance in practice. Remember, human factors is about performance and about supporting your performance in practice through an understanding and then a optimization of the world around us. There are loads of work streams related to human factors going on in the trust. Speak to the patient safety team, speak to the Trent Simulation Centre, have a look at our NUH Teams programme and please find out more about human factors and how they relate to you. The most important take home message if you see something that concerns you, if you see something that you think is inhibiting performance, make sure you raise the concern. Make sure you speak to somebody in a more senior position who can do something about it to make the world easier to work in and safer for our patients.